All right, it is time now to talk about your money and how to handle your finances. Money and business expert Derek Kinney is back with us again this afternoon to answer some of your viewer email questions. Uh, these are always good, and so uh, let's dive right in. Hey, Derek, thanks for being with us again. My pleasure, Jason. Love this segment. This is going to be fun. I do, too. So our first question today comes from Carla in Fort Worth, and you might as well tack my name onto this as well. Uh, she owns a small business and feels disorganized and behind. I get it, Carla. Uh, she's asking Derek for your best productivity tip to help her grow. Yeah, Carlo, here's what I would suggest you do is, number one, identify the top priorities of your business, but identify the highest, most dollar productive use of your time. In other words, in your business, what can you do to generate the most money? We want to focus your time and attention on that and have other people do the other stuff. And then the way to complement that is time blocking. If you're working in the business eight to five, eight to seven, 24 hours a day, whatever it feels like, you want to block in time each hour of the key task you're going to accomplish. That way you get it done and you're going to have more fun as well. Okay, good, uh, good advice there. Derek, uh, let's get to the next question here. This one comes from David in Alito. He says he's 28 and he just feels trapped in his job right now and that he doesn't uh, feel like he's making a difference, but he, he needs the paycheck. A lot of people can understand this one too, Derek. Uh, what do you recommend for someone like David? Yeah, David, first of all, don't buy the, the TikTok and the social media trend that says just leave your job. The grass is always greener. Typically, the grass gets greener where you water the grass you're on right now. So if you buy into that, here's what I want you to do for the next 30 days is write out on the app on your phone, the notes app or on a notebook, things you like about your job and things you dislike about your job. We want to make you the CEO of your life for the next 30 days. And the goal of this, David, is to inform you of what you want in your next job, all the way down to how the office is set up. Are you stuck in a cubicle? What is the communication like with your managers? All of this lets you know for the next job you apply for, not just jumping for the highest paying job, but one that has the best culture and brings out the best in you. I love that uh, phrase about making someone the CEO of their life. That's very empowering. It's a good way to think about it, Derek. Never thought of it like that. Uh, let's get to Brian in Frisco, who emails that he is about to receive a $25,000 inheritance. That's the good news. Uh, he has about $10,000 in credit card debt, though. That's the bad news. What does he do with the money, he wants to know, Derek? Yeah, Brian, bottom line with inheritances, I call this pennies from heaven and you wanna have something to show for the inheritance. The worst thing is you go buy the new computer, buy the new truck, and they're outdated a couple years from now, nothing to show for it. So number one, pay off the credit cards, get that done. That way you know that money always helped you improve your net worth, which is I like to call it as the report card for adults. Now the next thing you wanna do is find ways to build up that cash reserve, take a couple thousand dollars, put that into your checking account to give you flex in case the AC goes out, the car breaks down, etc. The rest of the money, though, park it in what's called a brokerage account and then invest that into, I would suggest, an ETF, an exchange traded fund, an index like the S&P 500. Today's a great day to do it. Hmm. The market's so far down. But the bottom line is now you have money that's working for you and something to show for that inheritance. All right, uh, let's get to our final question now, Derek. This one comes from Heather, who is in Arlington. She says she and her husband argue about money. We've seen this story before. Uh, she's asking, what's your opinion about being able to spend $50 or $100 without having to go and ask the other person for a, a, almost a permission here, Derek? Yeah, Heather, it's interesting. When I saw this question, uh, it's interesting. A lot of couples argue about money, but this whole definition of what limit do I need to not ask the other person? It goes to trust. And typically when couples don't trust each other with money, they don't trust that even at $50 or $100, they're going to spend it wisely. What I would suggest you do, Heather, you and your husband is, talk about every purchase you make right now because you're rebuilding trust. Once that communication gets strong, you're gonna find you get along better with your money. So it's not about the, the dollar amount, it's more about the trust and getting on the same page with your goals. Yeah, money is hard. I think trust might even be harder. Uh, Derek, thank you so much for going through the uh, email inbox with us once again today. Always appreciate it. My pleasure, Jason, thank you.